Good morning, friends in Christ. It is Friday, and it's a beautiful day that the Lord has made. We rejoice and we're glad in it as we have another opportunity today to be in the Word of God, to allow God to speak to us, to give us wisdom and discernment as we continue to walk with Him all the days of our lives. And as we have a day and this opportunity to be in the Word, it's also a day and opportunity for us to grow and to go out and be the people of God that He calls us to be. And so we are glad that you're joining us this morning for our Facebook Live devotions as we continue to go through the book of Psalms. And so go ahead and take out your Bible, open up to the very middle, and that should get you close to the book of Psalms. And today we're going to reside in Psalm 37. And so go ahead and turn to Psalm 37. Once you get there, go ahead and hit the share button as we have this wonderful opportunity to share the good news and to be in the Word of God together in community. And so Psalm 37. Psalm 37 is a psalm written by King David. And we know that it is written in his later years. And so when we think about a successful king who's done a lot of good things but also has his share of mess-ups and life experiences, and we think of a man who's walked with the Lord for a long time. And here he is, later in years, inspired by the Holy Spirit to write down these words of wisdom to you and to me. This psalm is not David talking to God or God talking to David. This is David talking to you and to me, this psalm, about what it means as believers to walk in the ways of the Lord and what he has learned from his walk with the Lord, and he shares his experiences so that it gives us wisdom so that we are reminded that it's a better way to live to follow Jesus. And so these are words of wisdom from David to you and to me. This is a great psalm to meditate on, to look at different verses and to make notes and to go back to um, because we know walking with the Lord's never easy, especially the world that we live. And it's easy to take our eyes off the Lord and focus on other things and the things going on in the world where David knows that temptation in this psalm and is teaching us to focus on Jesus and his word and on doing the right things. And so Psalm 37, let's dive into it. First, this is written poetry in Hebrew in a form called acrostic. Acrostic was a device used not just for beautiful poetry and words of wisdom, but also to be able to be memorized. And so it's taking the first letter of the alphabet in Hebrew and working its way through line by line, stanza by stanza. And so if you were going to write some poetry today using this form in the English language, you're going to start with A and then B and then C, and you're going to have 26 lines and stanzas following the start of the alphabet to start each stanza and line so that it's easy for you to remember and to memorize. That's what David uses here, this acrostic form of Hebrew poetry. So we begin with Aleph in Psalm 37, verse 1, the Hebrew first letter of the alphabet. He says, Fret not yourself because of evil doers; Be not envious of wrongdoers, for they will soon fade like the grass and wither like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. He says, do not fret. Do not fret. Do not be worried. And that Hebrew word for fret or worried here means to not get heated, to not get supercharged or hot-tempered, but to stay calm, stay peaceful especially when dealing with evil doers, Don't be jealous or envious of them because sometimes as a follower of the Lord, we think that the wicked are winning, that it's a better way to live and they have these blessings and that everything looks great for them, but like we are suffering for doing the right things and that we're missing out on some of the pleasures of the world and the pleasures of the flesh. But he says, just stay calm, continue to do the right thing. It's a better way to live. Just trust me. When I think of this verse, I think of some of the movies that I like to watch, whether that's a, a mafia movie where it looks like the mafia leader, you know, he's eating steak, he's eating shrimp, he's eating pasta, and he's having drinks, and it looks like he has all this money, and he's living the good life. 
while the cop or the other people around him are doing an honest living. And it looks like they're struggling and bearing, barely getting through. You know, they're eating bowls of cereal or something. But what always happens? The leader who's doing the wrong things where it looks like things are great for them end up going down. And that's what David is saying here. He says, just continue to do the right thing. Stay calm. Don't get overcharged or superheated. The Lord knows what's going on. And just trust in Him and do the right thing. And then that's why he says that in verse 3. Trust in the Lord, do good, dwell in the land, befriend faithfulness. He says to continue to be that person who does the right thing, who has that godly character, making those godly choices and those godly decisions. It's a better way to live. When you live that way, you live with no guilt, no shame. You're not looking over your shoulder. You're not paranoid because you're doing the right things is what David is teaching us. And I love verse 4. It's a highlight verse. Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. It's easy for us to misunderstand this passage and look at our relationship with God in the way of transactions. You know, if I do the right things, and He's going to bless me, and I'm going to get A, B, or C. That's not what this verse is about. He's saying, delight yourself in the Lord, and the Lord will satisfy the desires of your heart. The Lord knows your true heart. He knows what it is that you really need and what really matters, not the things of this world that we so easily focus on, but to delight in the Lord. And what does it mean to delight in the Lord? It means to be so strong in our relationship with Him and our love with Him and spending so much time with Him that the Lord is in us and through us and flowing through us to where we walk around with a joy and a peace because we delight ourselves in the Lord, not in the things of this world. It's what it was said of Martin Luther. When Luther would walk, people would say, there's a man who delights in the Lord. That he spends so much time in prayer and meditation, studying of scripture, to where the word captures him from his soul and his heart and his mind from the inside out to where he just walks with this joy, this peace and this calmness, knowing that he delights in the Lord. What a great attribute and a great affirmation for somebody to say that about us, that we spend so much time with Jesus and in his word and allowing his word to take root in our heart, to change us, mold us, and shape us, that people say, there's a person who delights in Jesus. Look at their joy. Look at their peace that only God can give. Now, verse 5, after delighting in the Lord, commit your ways to the Lord. Trust in him. He will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. So commit to the Lord, trust in him, he says, and to continue to bring forth the righteousness, the godly character, the godly decisions, the godly choices, doing the right thing. Continue to walk in the light, to live in the light. And to continue to pursue the Lord, pursue justice, pursue truth is what he's saying. Don't worry about that person who's doing the opposite things, who's doing the evil things, the things that go against God and against his word. Just let God take care of those things. You just continue to walk in the ways of the Lord, knowing that the Lord sees everything and that he takes care of everything. And he is the one that we allow to avenge the evildoer. We just continue to focus on Jesus and walking with him in his word, David says. Don't get caught up in what everybody else is doing, especially those who are doing wrong. The Lord sees it, and he'll handle it, and he'll take care of it. Look at verse 8. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself. It tends only to evil, for the evildoers shall be cut off. But those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Allow the Lord to take care of the evil the wicked. Let him take care of the ones who are doing injustice and those things. He's saying, but just reminded of what it means to walk in the ways of the Lord, that it's so easy in that walk to take our eyes off the Lord and his word and his ways and to focus on other things that are going on and get charged up about it. He says, don't let that bitterness, don't let that jealousy, don't let that uh, emotions and feelings of being envious, thinking that they're getting away with it, eat you up from the inside out. Just do what God calls you to do and that he will take care of that. He'll handle that. Verse 10, in just a little while, the wicked will be no more. Though you look carefully at his place, he will not be there. 
But the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant peace. The wicked plots against the righteous and gnashes his teeth at him. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he sees that his day is coming. And so this teaches us and reminds us that God is on the throne. He sees what's happening, and he continues to work and move. And so just commit to him, trust in him, and allow God to do what he does, and that he will bring justice, and that he will deliver us from evil, and evil will pay a price, and that will have its consequences. And he knows the day and the hour where that's going to happen, where he will bring that justice. And it only happens for a short season. Now, we know God is outside of time. He's eternal. So sometimes we can think, well, a person lived his whole life doing the wrong things, and yet he had all of these riches and all of these wonderful things of the world. And it may seem like a long time to us, but the Bible says a day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day to the Lord. The Lord looks through an eternal lens. And even though that may happen for a lifetime, for eternity, there will be consequences for the evildoer. And so it's important for us to also look through an eternal spiritual lens. Now we get to verse 11. But the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant peace, that calm, that shalom, knowing everything is all right with the Lord because of our relationship with him. The wicked plots, plots against the righteous and gnashes his teeth at him. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he sees that his day is coming. The wicked draw the sword and bend their bows to bring down the poor and the needy, to slay whose way is upright. Their sword shall enter their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. And so as the evildoers attack the righteous people of God, their ways will be thwarted. And what they used to attack us with will be used against them, God is saying, and that God will handle those things. And he tells us what to do in verse 16. Better is the little that the righteous had than the abundance of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the blameless, and their heritage will remain forever. They are not put to shame in evil times. In the days of famine they have abundance, but the wicked will perish. The enemies of the Lord are like the glory of the pastures. They vanish like smoke. They vanish away. And so that day will come for them. And that day has come. That day has come because Jesus went to a cross for you and for me. He defeated sin, death, and the devil, and evil, and he gives us victory. And yet there is this short time until we await his return. But his return will come. And when it comes, the evil, the wicked, will be cast into hell, the Bible tells us. But the righteous, we will be reigning in heaven in a new heaven and a new earth with the victorious, risen Lamb of God, Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. And so as we walk, we follow the ways of the Lord. We walk in the Lord, with the Lord, and we follow the Lord. We don't get caught up on those other things that can bring us down or lead us astray. As we pray the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And it's important for us to remember that, that that is our petition, our request to the Lord as we continue to walk in his ways. This finishes part one. We'll finish part two of Psalm 37 on Monday as we continue to go through the book of Psalms. As we pray, we pray for God to lead us, guide us, and direct us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful that nobody walks alone or fights alone, but that we walk with you and in fellowship with all of the saints, with all of the believers, those who have gone before us and those who continue to live with us and around us, walking in your ways together in fellowship, that we continue to strive to live in Christ. And what a blessing it is to be in Christ because of what you have done for us through the cross, that you give us this incredible relationship May we delight ourselves and our lives, growing in our relationship with you, Lord, and walking with you, following your Holy Spirit. Continue to give us your biblical wisdom and truth over the worries and the fears of the world. Help us to be that light, that light that you put in dark places, that has a joy, a calm, and a peace, because we know everything is all right, because our life and the things of this world 
are in your faithful hands. And that makes all of the difference. Bless our day today, Lord, as we walk in your ways. Continue to lead and guide and direct our steps as we follow you. In the most powerful name, the name of Jesus, our Savior, the King of kings and Lord of lords, and all God's people said, Amen. As we walk with the Lord, we look forward to you having a blessed Friday and a blessed weekend, and we look forward to seeing you in worship, in person, or online this Sunday as we continue to go through the book of Nehemiah in our fall sermon series, Revive Us. Have a blessed Friday in the name of Jesus.